Hey guys, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you to all my subscribers. But finally, today, after some time, I reached 300 subscribers, so thank you very much. And the reason I'm making these videos and audios, and I, and I really hope that you all understand, that I'm here to help. You know, please don't get me wrong. I am sincerely, I want to help people, and which I do every day whenever I go out for lunch or whenever I go out for a walk. You know, sometimes I carry a little change in my pocket. I carry it because I just, I just want to carry change, you know, because sometimes there are uh, beggars on the street and, you know, little kids. So I just give it to them from my heart. A lot of people told me, like, don't give it to them. They will follow you, this and that. That is all crap, man. I don't believe in that. Well, I do what I do because it feels good to me. So it's my choice. All right, back to the video. This video, listen to the very end. It might be a little difficult, even if you're an English speaker and listener, it might be a little bit difficult, but if you listen to it one or two or three times, you will understand why are you here. I, I was really getting this when I was listening to it a couple of days back. So I thought I'll share it with you. And the ending is super smart. Check it out, check it out. Cheers. Good day, Bashar. And to you, good day. Uh, can you tell us your definitions of uh, the following notions of what we call karma, fate, and free will? Thank you. Karma, from our point of view, is completely self-imposed and is really simply the idea of balance, of the recognition that if you do one thing, for the spirit, in a sense, to be balanced, it must then do something else that represents that balancing act, that balancing energy. Does that make sense? It does. It's not a punishment issue. Nevertheless, it is a balancing act. The idea of fate and free will are tied together, or destiny and free will, if you wish, are tied together in this way from our point of view. There are certain levels of your consciousness that see things in certain ways, differently than other levels of your consciousness might. On a higher level, what you might call a higher frequency plane, the spiritual level, you may choose things, for example, that you will experience in physical reality. Let's say you're about to choose a physical life. You may choose to explore certain themes so that when you are born into that life, those themes will keep cropping up and will appear to be something connected to fate or destiny because they keep happening and there doesn't seem to be much you can do about the fact that those themes keep cropping up. But because they keep cropping up, what it's doing is giving you the opportunity to use your free will in the physical reality to decide how you will engage with that theme, what you will learn from that theme, how you will explore that theme. So destiny and free will actually work hand in hand together to create an experience for the soul. Then based on that experience, the soul, the spirit, will take that experience and decide how it factors into its overall adventure or experience of growth. And the next thing it decides to do will in some way, shape, or form enhance or balance out what was just experienced, and that's where karma comes in. Does that make sense? Oh, yes, it does. Thank you. Does that answer the question sufficiently? Or is there something else about this you wanted to explore? Well, basically, you, you said that it, it is tied up uh, uh, fate, yes. fate and free will. Yes. So uh, we can explore it, but to what extent are we able to change our fate? All right. Well, it depends on how willing you are, in a sense, to experience what kind of theme you thought was necessary to explore. In many cases now, in your present day and age, because you are also exploring consciousness in a way that hasn't been done for a long time on your planet, it is also possible to change your theme. That's one of the experiences you can have. You can set yourself up, so to speak, with an initial theme but the initial theme might be to find out what that theme is and change it. Because now you're coming into awareness and awakening. And being aware that you created a theme to explore and brought that theme to a logical conclusion 
might be the purpose of exploring that theme. To awaken to the fact that you have the ability to choose another theme might in and of itself have been the point of exploring the first theme. Does that make sense? It does, yes. So, in this day and age, now on your planet, because of the awakening going on, there's a lot more freedom in these things, and the idea of destiny and free will are kind of blurring into each other a little bit. Nevertheless, there will still be Many themes that you may have set up for yourself to explore. <clears throat> and that's all right. Because obviously from the spirit and soul level point of view, it was important to explore those themes. And even if you are going to find something else to add to it as a secondary theme, it doesn't mean that you can't key off of the first one in a way through the rest of your life that will also enhance the second one. It's really up to you to decide for yourself what really seems important as information that you need, but the idea, the bottom line, as you say in your language, really is to all of this, do the experiences that you are having and do the choices that you make allow you more insight and more awareness of who it is you truly prefer to be, of your natural self, the self that was in that sense and is, truly more of a reflection of the infinite. That is the only reason those themes exist at all, to discover more and more in every way possible of who it is you actually are. And the discovery, the discovery, the experience itself of the discovery is the point. Sometimes it's not even what you discover. The experience of the discovery is the point. Because we hear people on your planet all the time talk about, well, what's real? What's real? Well, this is real. This is not real. Is reality real? I don't know. The only thing really in your physical world that is real is the experience of the reality, not the reality itself. The reality itself, in a sense, to use your modern vernacular, is a kind of virtual projection to give you an experience, and it is the experience that's real. Because it's the experience that you add to your energy, to your frequency, to uplift, to grow, to expand, to learn. It's the experience that does that. Physical reality is just a mirror. It's just reflecting to you what you need to see in order to have the experience you need to become more of who you actually are. Does that make sense? It does. Does that help? 